Apple announced at WWDC in June 2020 that Apple Silicon would be replacing Intel at the core of their Macs in the next two years. They also said that the first Apple Silicon Max would be arriving before the end of this year. So with the Apple September event out of the way and no mention of Apple Silicon, what can we expect? How soon can we expect it? And what does the roadmap look like for Apple Silicon? This is Living on iPad with David Eden Sangwal. I'm David for Living on iPad and I simplify Apple so that everything just works for you. If you love Apple news, then hit the like button. And if you want the latest Apple news, rumors and leaks, every weekday at 12 UTC, hit subscribe, ring the bell, and join my notification squad so you don't miss a thing. So I guess a really good place to start with where we're gonna see new Apple Silicon Macs coming in future is to look at the past five years and when Apple holds their events and what they put out at each event. So starting out in 2015, Apple special event on March the 9th where they announced Apple Watch, MacBooks, and iOS 8.2, which was released on the same day. That was followed by WWDC's keynote on June the 8th, uh, which obviously covered all of the software, but no hardware. Apple special event on September the 9th, 2015, which released watchOS 2, Apple TV with Siri remote, iPhone 6S, 6S Plus, 3D Touch, and the first iPad Pro and Apple Pencils. Moving on to 2016, we had an Apple special event on March the 21st, where the iPad Pro 9.7 inch was introduced, along with the original iPhone SE, which was based on the iPhone 5S design. WWDC 2016 fell on June the 13th and didn't include any hardware announcements. Apple held a special event on September the 7th, 2016, introducing the iPhone 7 and 7 Plus, AirPods and iOS 10. And that was the first event that introduced us to computational photography in a real way for the iPhones with the bokeh backgrounds. Apple also held a special event on October 27th, introducing new MacBook Pros. In 2017, WWDC was the first event of the year on June the 5th and introduced the HomePod, iMac Pro, second generation iPad Pro, MacBook and MacBook Pros. Then Apple's special event was on September the 12th, introducing Apple Watch Series 3, iPhone 8 and 8 Plus, and the iPhone 10, along with Apple TV 4K. No more events for 2017, just the two that year. Then moving into 2018, we got Apple's special event on March the 27th, which introduced the iPad 2018 at a schools-focused event. WWDC for the year was on June the 4th, and as usual, didn't include hardware announcements. Apple's special event on September the 12th included Apple Watch Series 4, iPhone XS and XS Max, and the iPhone XR. And then they held another special event on October the 30th, including the MacBook Air redesign, Mac Mini, and iPads Pro. 2019 brought Apple's special event on March 25th with Apple News Plus, Apple Arcade, Apple Card, and Apple TV Plus, their services event followed by WWDC on June the 3rd, 2019, which introduced the brand new Mac Pro and Pro Display XDR. Apple special event on September the 10th, 2019, included Apple Watch Series 5, iPhone 11 and 11 Pro, plus the Pro Max, the seventh generation iPad, and then they held yet another special event on the December the 2nd, but with no hardware, this was all about the best apps of the year in New York. That brings us up to 2020, and this year we have had WWDC on June 22nd with a virtual keynote for the first time, which included that Apple Silicon announcement, which is what has brought us to today's video. Then obviously we've already had one special event this year, which was Apple's special event on September the 15th, which introduced us to the Apple Watch Series 6, as well as the Apple Watch SE based on the Apple Watch Series 5, Apple One, uh, their services bundle, Apple Fitness Plus, and the iPad 8th generation and the iPad Air 4th generation, which is the one with the A14 chip and the iPad uh, Pro design. So what have we got left in store for this year? We've had no inkling yet on Apple Silicon. We have had some leaks. We have had some rumors. It looks very much like the first Mac that we'll see with Apple Silicon will be either based on the 12 inch MacBook design, which was discontinued a couple of years back, or the MacBook Pro 13 inch, which is kind of the entry point for a lot of people these days. There have been very few rumors, if any, uh, that mention using the iPad Air chassis for Apple Silicon, and I believe that is because this has been kind of introduced as an interim. I think that the original MacBook design, when it came out originally, was designed to fill the gap that the MacBook will fill in future. So it could be that the Air 
Monica moves over to whatever the base level MacBook is, and then the Pro being the one with the more power. But I think they may well use the MacBook 12 inch chassis with zero cooling, with no fans, because the Apple Silicon is so good at running on low power chips and without sipping too much battery life, which the more energy a chip uses, the more energy it has to dissipate in heat. Apple with its A-series chips has always had a combination of low and high powered cores. So for the majority of the time, you will only need to use the low power cores, the power energy efficient cores, and when you need the real performance, that's when the high end cores will power up and just chew through absolutely whatever needs to be done. Now this is why the MacBook that has been rumored is looking at using an A14X style chip, probably not branded as such, but possibly. And I think we are likely to see that at the October event alongside iPhones, because I, I think that Apple wants to get as many eyeballs as possible on the first of their Apple Silicon Macs. So I think that we will see the first Apple Silicon Mac landing alongside iPhone 12, even if they don't ship until slightly later in the year. There have been rumors about multiple events uh, left for this year. So an, ev an event in October and an event in November. We know that will be at least one because we haven't had the iPhone announcement yet. But I think it would make far more sense for Apple at least to include an Apple Silicon Mac alongside the iPhones to show how much difference could be made because we know that a lot of consumers that aren't necessarily following all of the Apple rumor mill will be impressed by the amount of power that can be got out of an Apple Silicon Mac. We have to as well look at what is the current lineup of Macs and how Apple is likely to roll these out. Now, when Apple moved from PowerPC to Intel, they again said two years was the roadmap for rolling these out. And I believe they were finished in about nine or 10 months. So it was actually a lot quicker than they'd expected. But I think the two years is more likely the last time they would consider releasing an Intel based Mac. So currently we have the MacBook Air in the line. As I mentioned, I think the MacBook Air itself, that name will go to the old style MacBook housing, the thinner, lighter chassis without an active cooling system. Um, the current MacBook Air is thicker than that old MacBook. It doesn't make any sense. Air should be the lightest in the range. It should be the thinnest and lightest and if you can take out your cooling system, that will make a huge difference to that. Rumors for that Mac included using a re-engineered butterfly keyboard. That is the one thing that terrifies me about this. I've not used the butterfly keyboard in a day-to-day -day setting. I've used it briefly in the Apple store and that kind of thing, but it has had so many problems in the past that I am really worried that if they put that in, that will put a lot of people off of that line. However, if they go down the line of doing a MacBook Pro 13 inch, which has got the magic keyboard design, that kind of keyboard is beloved by people. It really feels good. It's essentially along the lines of what the iMac and the high-end uh, MacBook Pro 16 currently has, and that would be a huge win. If I'm completely honest, I think Apple should probably go along the lines of having the 12 inch MacBook and then going straight up to the 16 inch MacBook Pro so that you have real differentiation in the line. So you have the 12 inch, which is gonna be really powerful for a thin and light as it is. But then if you really need that powerhouse, you go right up to the 16 inch. It looks like the pricing might come down on these. The, the main difference between these and an iPad with a keyboard is that you're not going to get a touch screen to begin with and you are probably going to be getting more RAM than normal because the way that Mac OS handles multitasking allows you to have multiple windows on the on the screen at any given time whereas with the iPad you're limited to two or maybe a very outside push three and people are not doing work while a video is rendering on an iPad they tend to be doing one task at a time in most cases so I definitely think we will see the kind of entry-level MacBook notebook whether it's a MacBook or a MacBook Air this side of Christmas um, and I think it will be released at the October event alongside iPhones the other Mac that I think might have a decent chance of coming out this side of Christmas is possibly a Mac Mini because Apple has already used a Mac Mini chassis for their developer transition kit. So we know they've got the capability of putting it into there. We know that they've got the ways of getting the display and everything out of there. And that would be a really simple way to get more people using a Mac. And also coming up later, I've got an idea that they might make it even easier to use a Mac Mini. MacBook Pro 16 inch, I think that is probably most likely to be at a March event maybe in 2016. And the other thing I think we might well see at that March event is the iMac. Now, 
Apple has often used the March event to focus more on their education market, and Apple actually does really well in education. iPads are huge in education. iMacs are a great classroom computer because it's a simple one cable setup if you're using wireless peripherals. I think in most cases, uh, schools will probably use wired keyboards and mice. However, it is a very simple installation in comparison to tower desktop computers and Apple's classroom kit and some of the other stuff that they've been working on just recently, especially post COVID would work really well for that. Now, I think if we do see that coming out in March, I think the iMac is probably gonna be the first Mac that comes with Face ID. We know that this is on the way because there, is, there are chunks of code C sitting there in Big Sur, which developers have already had access to. So Face ID will come to Max at some point, or at least is being trialed for Max. And I think the iMac is gonna be the perfect device for that. Now I have mentioned that I think using Face ID to determine between different multiple users for a computer is a really good way of working. So if that secure enclave can actually contain multiple IDs and then be able to pull the right data from a server that would be a great way for it to work as almost a thin client where all of the data stays on a central server. We've already had iMacs with high-speed ethernet included, so that shouldn't be no problem, even if they don't wanna go down the wireless route. So potentially for that event, I think we will be seeing iMacs coming alongside 16-inch MacBook Pros. Then we will be coming up to WWDC in 2021. I think that would be a perfect opportunity to launch a 30-inch iMac uh, and an iMac Pro model alongside the new Mac Pro. I don't see that it's going to be a complete overhaul of the Mac Pro. They've done this huge reveal, I think it was last year, for the Mac Pros with the Pro Display XDR. And that's not going to be something that they're going to throw away. However, there may well be a equivalent to the Afterburner card that can be plugged into the current Mac Pros that give it Apple Silicon natively. I think that would be great and then using the x86 processors as essentially slaves that can be used to just chew through data and uh, accelerate the ARM cores. So I mentioned a little bit earlier I think there might be something different as well with the i uh, with the Mac minis. I feel like Apple might release the Mac mini with Apple Silicon along with a way to use existing Macs as a display for it. So imagine you would get a Mac mini, and you would get the appropriate display cable that you're able to plug into an existing iMac or even into a MacBook or maybe even an iPad to be used as the display for your Mac mini. So it makes it a super accessible way of doing it. Maybe they could even get back down to that $500 or $600 mark that they used to have for the uh, Mac minis. The Mac mini was always designed to be the most accessible and cheapest Mac because you would bring your own keyboard, mouse and display. And now if you can use your current iMac, I would be delighted to be able to buy a Mac mini with Apple Silicon that I could sit under here and use that iMac as my main display. And then this is my secondary display. So I think that would be a great way for Apple to go if they wanted to just keep these um, devices alive. And the other thing there is you're also reducing e-waste because rather than sending this whole unit to landfill, if they were to offer a firmware update that would disable essentially the uh, the internals of the iMac and literally just allow it to pass through to the display, that would reduce energy consumption, it would reduce the amount of e-waste going to landfill, and it would make the new Mac Mini a much more compelling option for people. So what do you think about what we've just gone through? In the immortal words of Steve Jobs. But there is one more thing that I want to talk about. I would love to see Apple actually release a specific display for these Apple Silicon Macs, because we know that they're going to be able to run iPad and iPhone software natively and that they are able to translate that into mouse or trackpad pointer use, but the best way to use iPhone and iPad software is to use a touchscreen. So I would love it if they were to release a touchscreen for Mac with Apple Silicon. I think it would be just a really great thing to do, a much lower price point than the uh, Display XDR, maybe with one of the LG panels that they already use in the iMacs, something like that, which I would guess if they can put out the iMacs, uh, a 4K iMac for like 1200, I think, something around that, they should be able to put that display out for maybe 500. I think that would be a really compelling option to have an Apple design display with a touch screen included, capacitive touch screen. I don't see why they couldn't do it. If they can put out an iPad, 
these days, way over HD resolution with a capacitive touchscreen and batteries and all of the power that they include. I don't see why they couldn't do a $500 or $600 display that's 27 inches maybe. I also think iPad Pros will probably come before the end of this year. Uh, the iPad Air with A14 is basically as powerful as the current iPads Pro. The only difference is being that the iPads Pro now have the camera cluster and they also have the 120 hertz display with ProMotion, which I don't know if that's enough for people to spend an extra couple of hundred dollars, I think, between the iPad Air and the iPad Pro 11 inch. Is that compelling enough for people? I don't think it probably is. So I think it will cannibalize their sales if they don't put the A14 into iPads Pro this year. I think that will probably also come. It will probably be that the October event goes iPhones using the powerful A14 processor from iPad Air, then iPads Pro using the A14X chip, which takes it to the whole next level. And then we're also putting that into our brand new MacBook, which with additional RAM allows you to multitask, allows you to also run all of these iPad Pro apps. Maybe we can even get the iPad Pro apps. We can get the iPad versions of Final Cut at the door as well. That would make a lot of sense if they're going to have the Apple Silicon version of, I, uh, of Final Cut Pro being released alongside the Apple Silicon Max, which I'm sure they will because they don't want people to be not buying it because they can't get the software, then why not let the iPads play with it too? Thank you so much for watching. Let me know in the comments which Apple Silicon Mac it is that you are waiting for the very most. And we will see you on tomorrow's Apple Daily. Don't forget, ring the notification bell. And if you do, let me know in the comments so that I can give you a shout out in the very next video. Thanks for watching.